Hi everyone, welcome back. All right, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show us how to make this really gorgeous, minimal, elegant, and simple pendant. A couple of things to point out. This is a one wire technique. It's basically taking one wire and flipping back and forth and coiling, um, you know, in an elegant way over this capuchon. In order for it to stay, there are strategic ties that we put into place, but also that this upper wire and this side wire that we pull down need to catch the upper edge, soft shoulder of your stone. It's hard to see in the video, so I'm pointing it out here. Um, but when I'm nudging things over, you know, this upper edge is being held in place with this wire because it's riding over the soft shoulder of my stone. So even though it looks real minimal, if I push on the back of it, it's not popping out right there. That's really important to notice when you're making this frame. And also on this side, that this side wire, uh, as I mentioned in the video, catches the soft edge of your stone to hold it into place. And then the rest of it is to put the ties in place to give proper tension on all four corners of the stone. All right, it's a little bit squirrely. It's worth practicing. And you can pretty much do this on ovals, rounds, irregular ovals and irregular rounds. It works beautifully. For a one inch size stone, I would stay with the bigger wire of 16 gauge. You know, if your stone were half this size, you might downgrade the wire to 18 gauge, go a little smaller. But it is one wire and it is a tension setting. So really, um, you know, you don't want to get small wires on here because it, you know, it, the frame won't hold together if it's too small of a wire and too big of a stone. So in order for it to be minimal, you want substantial wire and you want to make sure that uh, these strategic ties are in and that these upper wires are actually on the soft shoulders of your cap so that it doesn't push out the front. And I think you can see that. All right, so let's make this beauty, you guys. I hope you love it. And I know that the ones that I've made sold really quickly, and you guys have been asking for this tutorial. So I'm really excited to bring it to you. And I hope it's, um, I hope it's something that you'll enjoy. So let's get started. I'm starting with an oval banded agate cabochon. It's beautiful. It's hard to see through the light, but it's got some really beautiful golden bands that go through it. It's oval shaped and it's about one inch long by three quarter inch wide. So that'd be about 25 millimeter by 18 millimeter. I'm starting with one length of 16 gauge round soft copper wire and it's cut to 14 inches long. I have the center marked at seven inches and I'm just going to take my very hardy chain nose plier, grip the center of the wire, put my thumb there, and I'm just going to bend the wire back on itself, hairpin it back on itself. So just folding it in half like that. It's okay if your mark's a millimeter or so off. When I get it bent, I'm going to hold both halves of the wire. Whoop. And I'm going to gently squeeze this space closed. It doesn't have to be all the way closed. Just like that is good. Grip from the side. Hold on to about the bottom a couple of millimeter pretty tightly. Take the upper wire and just make a soft curve down to horizontal to the left. And a soft curve down to horizontal to the right. Try to get these curves nice and similar on both sides. And that's about good. There's about a half an inch there from the tip to the horizontal line and a quarter of an inch where the wires stay together. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to use a spot of tape. Just 
take a little bit, make it so that the sticky side is turned out, put it on the back of my stone, and I'll stick my stone to my measure so that the center of my stone is on a horizontal line, and that'll just help me keep it steady while I make my shape. So to shape around this cab, I'm just going to hold the tip of the wire down. I'll hold this length down about a quarter of an inch off of my stone. And I've got about two millimeter of space between my stone and the wire. Just use my finger and gently curve this wire up until it crosses at the top center. I can just bow that out a little bit. And I've got a couple of millimeter all the way around the stone and it crosses right here at the horizontal line, top center. So to make a consistent bend, I'll just turn my frame over since my stone is fairly, fairly symmetrical. And I'll just get realigned so that my point is there and I've got just a couple of millimeter and I cross back over the horizontal line in the center. And I'll hold on to all of this. And I'll just use my thumb bump to my stone out of position, so I'll put that back. And I'll just curve this wire around the stone until it crosses top center. It makes kind of a leafy shape, and that's pretty good. But I want to narrow this space down. I'm a little bit wide. So once I get the shape that I like, I'll just keep this top center and pull them closed a little bit. And that's about good there. You don't want too much space. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. It could look like a little leaf shape, just like this. And you just want there to be about a millimeter or so of space all the way around the stone. About a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch at the bottom. Okay, about like that. When I get this, I'll just mark the top of the wire and I make what are called sandwich marks on the lower wire so that I know where it needs to crisscross. I'm going to hammer this and that'll just help me remember where they need to cross. So I've taken out my clean bench block. I'm going to use my ball peen hammer, my heavyweight hammer. And I'm going to strike more on the curve and flare it out and less as I taper the wire into the points. I'll hold my wire steady right here as I hammer. I'll part this a little bit so that I can taper up without denting the wire. That looks pretty good. And I'll just hammer similarly on the other side. marks come back together. Check the fit of my stone and that's perfect. It should just be about like that. You can add a little curvy down here. We'll fix this up a little bit. It went a little bit off and I'll just center that back up but that looks pretty good.
and that looks better. Make sure I didn't change anything too much, and that's pretty good there, and I like that better. Alright, so now I'll go off camera, I'll sand all of this down, starting with, you know, my hammer's not too bad, so I'm going to start with 1,000, go to 2,000, and then 3,000 grit to remove all of the scratches and clean up the edges, both inside and out. So I'm starting with 1,000. I'm sanding all of my edges. I'm getting off any hammer strikes I may have made. And I'm getting my metal kind of evened out here on the inner edges and outer edges. I'm just making demonstration. I've spent quite a bit of time sanding off camera. And then I'll move from 1000 grit to 2000 grit next. And I'll continue to go over all the surfaces and just refine the flat hammered metal. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So when we made this little hairpin bend, there's one half the wire that rides on top. Where they crisscross up here, my marks are almost sanded off, so I'll just mark them again so we can see. I'm going to make sure that the wire that starts on top here is on the bottom when it crisscrosses up here. I should have done that when I initially turn this frame, but since I didn't, I'll just flip them over. It's not a big deal. And I'll realign my marks. Make sure to get your little cabochon up here and see that it's still sitting in there perfectly the way you want it to, and that's great. So again, the wire that, the half of the wire that's on top here comes and crisscrosses to the bottom up here. Alright, so up here I'm going to work with that bottom wire. I'm going to make sure that they're crisscrossed exactly where I want them to be. I'll hold the bottom wire and I'll turn it up and over onto itself without moving the inside wire or displacing it. So you got to give it a couple of millimeter to make sure that you have room for that wire. Just bend it right over your plier just like that and right back onto itself. When you get that bend, turn it this way, and you just want to do gentle tapping until the two halves of this bent wire touch the center wire. You don't need to crush it just yet. Just get it tapped into place. And from here, just check the fit here and make sure we didn't change anything. That's perfect. We're going to sculpt this upper wire along the curve of the frame and slightly to the inside. You just use your finger and your thumb make a nice gentle curve just like that. We're going to hammer it and right down here just hold real tight just to the inside of the frame. Hold real tight right here and just turn the wire slightly down just like that. Okay. So we'll pull this out to hammer it right here at the hinge. You'll hold on to that and just turn it out far enough that you can reach that wire for hammering. While it's out here, I would sand it all. sake of demonstration, I'll just go through that. 
right, once you have it sanded to your liking, we'll just move it back into place right here at the hinge. Just turn it so that it sits right back inside the frame. There should be a little bit of 3D space. Just like that. Once you get that all set up and you know that you're back in place here, you can go ahead and start to retighten this. Just keep that little space open and pinch really tight right there, almost as if to dent the wire so that it really locks into place. If I hold my stone up, that wire should just ride to the inside edge of my stone, just like that. We're going to flip it to the back and use the remaining length to make a back seat for the frame. So you want to maintain a slight space of a couple of millimeter there. Depends on, you know, the depth of your stone. Two or three millimeter will keep it on its, on the edge of my stone here on the soft shoulder edge. So I'll just make sure to maintain that little bit. I'll hold the frame. I'm looking at the back of the frame right now. And I'll just use my plier to help me turn this wire up 90 degrees. You want to hold two or three mil, a couple of millimeter, not two or three, but about two millimeter out, so that you have enough room to turn that wire without pulling or shifting where it lays. Just help it all the way over the frame and back onto itself. just like we've been doing. Once you get it lined up where you like it, go ahead and pinch it a little bit more closed on that wire. Just get it to where it touches the inside wire. And that's pretty good there. And looking at the back of the frame, we'll just shape this with our hands to make a back seat for the stone, so I'll come in a ways from the initial frame, not too far, but just in a little ways, and then right here at the top, about three millimeter from the point, I'm going to make a sharp bend back down along the frame. Make sure to slant the wire so that it touches the other side of this frame. I'll use my plier and help me curve this wire down into the slight inside, just like that. Make sure that your stone sits on that wire. You can manipulate it with your finger a little bit and bring it a little more to the inside. Make sure that point stays in place there. Take the tape off the back of this. That probably help me. And it makes like a little cup that your stone can sit on while it's inside this frame. And you can manipulate the shape a little bit to fit the back side of your frame, your stone, a little better. I think I'm going to curve it up a little bit from down here. So right here, I'm just going to hold everything. And we'll make it curve up. And that'll be a little cleaner, give me a little more seat. Like that. And that's pretty good there. It's optional to hammer that. If you want it to lay a little flatter, you can pull it out and hammer it. I might just do that from right here before we tighten it. 
same thing. You can just pull it out to the side. Don't change where it's bent and just hammer that a little more flat. I just went all the way around it, gave it an even flatness. Since this is the back of my pendant, I'm not going to bother to sand that because it's just going to lay to the back. You could just sand this side of it and clean it up a little bit. Once it's all back into place and you're happy with where it's shaped, let's focus back on this bend right here. Get it on the front and back of your plier and pinch really tightly so that it locks in place there. It might push to the inside a little bit and that's fine. You can just use your fingers and push it back again. We'll be tying all that down. Refit the stone. It should sit to the inside edge of this wire. It should sit on the back of your back seat there, just like that. Close enough that we can tie it right there and over here as well. We'll stretch to tie it. And it should be held in, you know, this should help hold this side edge in. If you need to, you can add a little 3D space to this upper wire. Just a little bit like that. Okay, and that's pretty good there. So now I'll go ahead and make the bail. I need a little more space up here, so I'm going to take my plier a little deeper just to the edge. It's about a quarter of an inch that I want to leave for the bail. And the same maneuver, I'm going to pull this over, excuse me, bend this over and back onto itself. I made a little thicker distance there so that I have room for a chain. And I'm just going to gently tap it all down together, but still leave that space. You just want to make sure that it touches the bottom wire right there, but you still have a nice big opening for a bail. Once you get that turned, it doesn't need to be killer tight right there. You just need to make it land. Take it up here and give it a cute little turnout and turn up for design. Just make sure that that sits nice and upright on your pendant since it's the bail and that you have enough space there. You could have made it a little longer than a quarter of an inch. I might just add some length to it. Take it up a little bit. And that's about good enough to get a chain through that. Now you'll take the remaining length and we can make a design on the body, either a nice big spiral that'll hold the front of this stone in, or you can pass through here and make some side designs and come back to the back. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and have us tie up the back just so we have a little more stability. So let's take 6 inches of 26 gauge. So I have 6 inches of 26 gauge wire and I'm just going to sew the back seat onto the frame. I'm going to start by making a few wraps just on this back wire. So I've inserted in between the back wire and the side wire. And I'm going to make three little single coils right here. Then I'm going to jump over here 
and come in between and start to tie it to this inside, you know, the side frame here, the main hammered frame. So I've got one wrap around it. We'll go a complete 360 around it. Stretch cross back over and go between them. You can use your plier to help you grab the weaving wire. And then I'll go twice around the inside back wire. Switch my camera a little bit so you can see it. And now I'll go back to the outside frame wire. This is basically just a figure eight weave between the back seat wire and this side hammered wire. And I'll just make a couple of repeats and that's enough to secure that. Take a look at the front, make sure it looks nice. I just see these two little wraps right here. It looks good, so I'm going to get rid of this leading fragment here. Just cut it to the inside. And tap it down right there. And then I'll get rid of this one. Just give it some tension and some big circles until it breaks, or certainly you cut it off. And I'll just use the remaining length of this. I'm going to come over here and tie these uh, these two pieces together over here. You might have to pull it a little bit, and that's okay. So we'll start by making a couple of single wraps around this inside back wire. Since it's open right there, I'll just use that opening. And there's three single wraps. And then I'll come over and attach it to the outside frame with a couple of wraps. And stretch back. So again, a figure eight. Just making a couple of wraps there. Stretching over to the outside frame and making a couple of nice, neat, secure wraps back here. And then I think I'm going to take it to the inside and end it on this inside wire with a couple of wraps. And I'll just snip it down here real close. And this one also to the inside where the stone is going to be laying on top of it. Tap it down. Tap it down and make sure your wraps are nice and neat there on the side edge. Okay, so just like that. So you're pretty secure in the back with those two ties. We've eliminated any big spaces where the stone might be able to slip out. You don't want to leave openings that are bigger than your stone because then the stone can fall out. So now putting the stone back in, we might have to make some 3D space because we've tied that back wire down. So here I'm just going to tap it. I use this figure eight wrap specifically so that it gives a little bit of space between the two frame wires and you can kind of curve that inside one to the down and back a little bit.
so that you can get your stone to fit back in here. That'll take a little finagling. Just take your time. Make sure that the stone sits inside the whole frame, just like it started out. So this upper edge is inside the frame. This edge is caught by this big side frame, and it's sitting fairly evenly there. And that looks pretty good. So I use this upper wire now. You can do any type of design. I'll just show you the big spiral in the front that will hold this together. And then we'll stitch it in a couple more spaces after this, and it should be pretty secure for you. So I'm just going to hold on to everything. This wire is decorative, but it also has to be the wire that holds the stone, the face of the stone in. So I'm going to make a big, long curve that rides just the shoulder of my stone, but close enough that I can, you know, attach it and tie it. I'm going to curve it around the bottom, curve it close to this other hammered wire so that I can tie onto there and attach. And I like to turn the wire so that I can see where I might be making my spiral. Cut it there and I'll make a nice big spiral into the belly of the stone. Just like that. The whole waist is about one inch on this 14 inches. So you might give yourself a little more wire if you want to. So I'll use, I'll continue to use my chain nose plier. I'll take the very tip of that cut wire, hold this curve, and I'm going to do this with the stone in place, but if you don't think you can, you can always take the stone out. I'm trying to also stay in the camera, so I'm going to be turning a little bit odd. You don't want to take your pliers down on your stone, so keep control over that. And just turn a nice big spiral onto the belly of the stone there that we can, you know, stretch and, and make sure that it meets this one so that we can tie it and make sure that it meets this side so that we can weave a little bit there and tie it. And that's what's going to keep the stone in place. And then we'll also stitch right there. And that should cinch it all up for you. Certainly you could always add another wire if you felt like you needed to as a decorative wire, but also to help get your stone in there and, you know, staying in there if you need to. So that's pretty good there. I'm going to pull this out and hammer this and I'll make a fancy tip. So up here at the hinge. won't change the shape of anything. I'll just pull it out to where I can get to it. Right here at the hinge. What I call the hinge. And I'm going to bring this tip out kind of corkscrew style so that I don't change anything but I can get to the tip of it and work with it. I'm going to cut it diagonally. And then I'll just shape this into a nice soft point. And that's pretty good there. So I'll put it all down and back together again. And then I'll hammer it. pretty happy with that. So I'll sand all of that. All 
right, and then after it's sanded and beautiful, we'll put it all back together. Get our stone sitting in here how we want it. And we'll just motion motion this back into place right here at the hinge. Get it back over our stone. And just make small adjustments with your fingers if you need to to get this upper bale back on track. And that's what I'm going to do is just pull it up and back slightly. Refine the curve if you need to. Make sure that this inside edge, this inside middle wire is riding against the side of your stone, like that. And that the stone is sitting fairly center, and that's pretty good. So we'll sew that little bit, and then we'll sew the spiral down as well in a couple of strategic places, and that should that should about do it. That should get you back in there. Somehow waffled off a little bit over here, so I'm going to adjust that back wire. So I just pushed that in a little bit. It pushed this over a little bit, and that's fine. I like that look a little better, so I'm just going to re-tap that. I'm going to motion it up and curve it just by pinching them both together there a little bit so it tucks up a little bit, and I still have room for my chain. Once I get that tucked, if I need to pinch it back here to make it super tight again, you can do that, and that looks nice. Just going to finagle this upper wire with my fingers. Get it to lay the way I want it to. And I think that's beautiful. Put it down on the mat. Get on a horizontal line and just make sure that everything is laying down nicely. And that your curves you know, that you are indeed fairly centered, and I like that a lot. I like the shapeliness of that. So I'm going to tie it up. So I've got another 6 inches of 26 gauge, and I think for the sake of ease, the first thing I'm going to do is tie it right here, since I still have the flexibility of moving the stone or possibly even taking it out if I need to. So I'll do a couple of single wraps on this back wire. Just hold your stone in place. It's not secure yet, so don't let it fall out the front. Make a couple of wraps around this back wire. to get anchored. And then I'll pretty much do a figure eight by going in between. And wrapping to this back wire. Just leave some space so that, you know, the inside uh, curved wire is a little bit set back. Let me change my camera focus. There you go. So I'll wrap a couple of times there. Come back to the inside by going between and under. A couple of more wraps on this inside frame wire. back 
room in between and put a couple of wraps to the center hammered portion of the wire. So I've got two in front and that looks pretty good. While it's here, I can use it and I can go ahead and attach and tie, you know, the top one. So I'm going to make sure that there's two full wraps here. I'll come back above. Just like that. You want to make sure that you've got, you know, that slight gap there. And I'll just do a couple of figure eight weaves. between that top wire and the back wire. Wrap twice around the back wire. Oop. Pass through into the front. And we'll do a couple more around this front wire. I'm going to go one more repeat, so I'll pass back through. So it's like one and a half around, you know, each each frame wire, and that looks pretty good there. I'm going to wrap a couple more times on the back wire and then end this wire. I just do three. I like the way that looks. So I'll end this fragment back here. I'll just give a little tension, do big circles until it breaks. And the same with this one. Give a little tension and do big circles until it breaks. And I think I've got, you know, I can attach right here once and then right here once. And that should lock this whole thing together. And we'll do it in just the same way with a little bit of stretch. It's going to be real tight right here because you got to come in between the stone, this hammered wire, and you know cinch these two together. So we'll see what we can do there. But let's start right here and we'll tie that segment together with another six inches of 26 gauge. So I've got six more inches of 26 gauge wire. And I'll start by anchoring, well actually the spiral is still open, so it would be easy to come up on it like that. So I've come through the bottom and I've wrapped myself around the spiral and I'll just go once more to anchor that. I kind of get down here more towards where I want to be and do a few figure eight wraps. So I gave myself about three inches here. I'll use the rest of that wire for the other the other tie if I have enough left over. You can use as much of this as you want. So just make sure it doesn't pull your spiral off of the stone. Get anchored right there, and then we'll just make a few figure eight wraps. You can make as many or as little as you want. This is 26 gauge wire, so it's pretty hardy wire. Since the spiral is still open, I'm going to utilize that, make it easy on myself. So one and a half around. The spiral and then I'll dive through the frame into the back. Just push your wraps in place each time, get them living nice. And I'm just going to end it back here with a few wraps. And that 
looks pretty good, real neat. So I'll just end these wires back here and I'll use the remaining length of this wire to do the last tie. So I'll just pull and make big circles till it breaks. Same with this one. Hold on to everything. Don't pull your shape, you know, your frame out of shape and make big circles until it breaks. And then the last tie is right here to get this spiral head over. This is going to be the toughest and tightest one. So the trick is kind of to get in where you can, which is up here, and then you can slide down and into place over here. So I just gave myself an inch. It's not a very pretty druzy opening there, so I'm just covering it up with my wire. You know, but certainly if your stone had an interesting spot, you might make that spiral enhance it by going around it. So I'm just going to make two or three decorative wraps right here. To get rid of the leading fragment, I'm going to cut it with just a couple of millimeter to spare. Take my fine plier, turn the very tip of that cut down, and then get on top of it and tap it so that it goes underneath there. And you can make as many wraps as you want, but you should feel that this is you know, seriously holding the stone in place now. It's sandwiched in and tied in on all sides. I'm going to end this by tying it just a few times to the back frame. I might as well, since I have this wire here. So I'll make three or four nice wraps right there. And then I'll come back here and make sure that there's no slack and I'll do couple of wraps right there, maybe three. And I'll just end it like that. I could even come back here and do a couple of wraps on this very back wire, cinch all three of them up just even more securely, even though I probably don't need this, but it's a good tie. And it's a good, clean way to end this wire. All right, you guys, I think we're done. Other than unless you want to add a bead ball or something something to that open space above the stone here. Woo, it's gorgeous. Just needs to be polished up. Use your fingers and, you know, scooch things as you feel necessary if you need to. It should be really in place. You can see that from the video here, and you can also probably feel that in your own piece. So you can lay it down on a horizontal line, change my focus, and just, you know, press things down, love tap everything, make sure everything's laying down nicely, make sure that your line is nice and centered top to bottom, or however you like it. It doesn't have to be centered. It could be, you know, a little bit asymmetrical and beautiful. That way, too. I'm going to tuck this wire a little bit more. Just look over everything and make sure it looks nice and it looks the way you want it to. I'm going to get this a little bit tighter because it's poking out. Ooh. So I might just break that off now down here got that a little bit short. So just do your little maintenance here and there. There it is. I'll just leave three up there. And then you can add your favorite chain and enjoy this beautiful piece. One of my favorite chains is, whoop, sorry for the little camera earthquake. One of my most favorite chains is 1.5 millimeter ball chain. It fits really nicely into these petite bale spaces. 
It's a very strong chain for being a very small chain, and it looks nice. The trade-off is that you got to finish the ends, but I have a video on how to do that. So if you want to watch that next video on how to finish ball chain ends, then you could set yourself up with ball chain. Otherwise, you could use 1.5 millimeter cable chain that's already pre-made and has the ends on them, like this one here. This is called cable chain, and that works nicely in these pendants as well. Alright, so lastly would be to add a bead ball there if you want one. And just for grins, I'll go ahead and drop one in there, although I might not tie it. That's about three millimeter. It should fit nicely right into there, and you can tie it off to these back rails. And that makes for a beautiful pendant. Alright, you guys, I hope you love it. It takes a little bit of practice to get the finagle on these wires and to make sure that you leave the 3D spaces and also, you know, that these strategic ties are keeping in all four corners of your pendant. You know, keeping all four corners so that there's tension and that there's no big runs where the stone can pop out. All right, but I think it's worth practicing. I think it's worth doing. It makes a very minimal and elegant pendant. This was 14 inches of wire with one inch to spare on the 16 gauge that I used for the frame. And then we used a couple of feet of 26 gauge for the strategic ties. All right, much love you guys, enjoy. And I hope you decide to make lots of them. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can always get a notice when I put up new and fun things to try like this beautiful tutorial. All right, much love. We'll see you again for the next time. Thanks for being here. Lots of love. Bye.